trace and the current trace of one of the injectors on this Mazda. Now, some of the things we need to use, maybe a little bit different than you've used on other scopes, will be an attenuator and also an inductive amp probe. There's the attenuator. You can see it's a 20 to 1 attenuator. What's happening is on these injectors we may see voltages upwards of 100 volts. With this particular Pico device it doesn't like voltages much over 70 or 80 volts. It can actually cause damage to that little blue interface there. So rather than have that happen there's an attenuator that's going to safely transmit that circuit into the uh, interface there so the computer can see it without any kind of damage. Now sitting next to it there's an inductive current probe. Now on the inductive current probe we've got two different positions. This happens to be part of the Pico scope uh, kit if you will. Now the current we're expecting to see in this injector is going to be way less than uh, 16 way less than 20 but 20 is the best scale I have. I'm expecting to see about one amp there so I'm going to select 20 amp scale and then we're going to attach it to the car. All right, number one injector, you can see right there, I have the red wire pinned already. So I'm going to connect the alligator scope lead to that and I'm going to collect or connect my amp, amp probe around either of the wires. It doesn't matter if it's the yellow, the power wire, or the red, the ground or control wire. Uh, current's going to go through both wires just the same, so that's not going to be a big deal. Now, before I connect anything, we're going to need to make some changes on the scope. Last time the scope was used, we were looking at two voltage traces, so let's move this over here. So, I need to show you how to change this, at least the B trace, to measure current. Alright, so we move the cursor. We go to the B, this little box right up here. Select it. Right now it's on the one to one probe, and I need to change that to current. So, we we'll take a look here. I'm looking at the 60 amp clamp in the 20 amp mode. Alright, so B is set up. I also have to change the A, because as I mentioned when we were looking at injector voltages. It may go over that 70 to 80 volt range, so I need to tell the computer here that I am running a 20 to 1 attenuator. Alright, so there's the attenuator in place between the lead and the interface. I'm going to make the connection on the ground wire or the control wire using my meter lead or the scope lead. So I'll try not to get into the picture myself other than this. So I grab that pin there. Next thing then, I'm going to go ahead and take the probe. I'm going to turn them on. It has a zero button. So I'll hit the zero button. And then I'll clamp it around one of the wires. Now, does it matter which wire? No. Current is current. Doesn't matter if it's on the positive side or the negative side. However, the direction. I may need to account for that when we start it up and take a look and see what we have. All right, so there's the connections. Okay. I'm going to need to go and we're going to take a look at uh, some of the voltage ranges. We'll look at the triggering and we'll get this hopefully so we see a nice pattern. I'm going to move my blue trace. Towards the top of the panel. There we go. Now we're seeing what's happening with that blue trace there. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and change my trigger. We'll look at the trigger. The trigger now is looking for a rising edge. I prefer to trigger on the falling edge because I know this injector is controlled by grounding it. So that's my preference when it turns on. Voltage looks okay. Time, if I want to, and I do. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we get a better look at that trace. I'm going to go down to, uh, let's go two milliseconds, see what that looks like. That's a pretty good picture there. Now, we've got 
got some kind of issues here. Get a little bit of noise there. I'm going to go ahead and change this trigger up a little bit. See if maybe it makes it a little bit happier. All right, I'm going to have to change the time frame. All right, now let's take a look at the red trace. I'm set for minus 5 to 20 amps. That's way too small. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't make that a little bit smaller. Let's go plus or minus 2 amps, see what that looks like. That looks pretty well. <coughs> now I'm going to go ahead and take the red trace, move him down. So we have a little better view of both of them together. All right, it's, at, it's a, a pretty nice looking pattern. A couple things I want to point out here. The injector opening and closing points. When the injector is turned on, we can see that by the injector voltage on our eighth trace here going towards zero. Okay, so the PCM is grounding the injector. The instant that injector is grounded, we see current beginning to rise. Now, this is an inductor, or it's a coil of wire, so we don't have an instantaneous rise in amperage. We have a, a slope, if you will, as the magnetic field is building and we get the counter EMF uh, opposing in that current. Uh, eventually it's going to reach its saturation point. So that's why we see kind of a ramp of sorts working its way up to its maximum, or what we're going to call saturation point. Well, the injector doesn't open immediately because we have too little current running through here to cause a strong enough magnetic field to yank that pinnel open. We can actually see the pinnel opening, and that's occurring right here. This little bump that's occurring here, that is the movement of that pinnel. And again, anytime we have a magnetic field and a moving conductor, we're going to have a change of that magnetic field as well as current induced into the conductor. Anyways, the result is this pinnel bump. So this is the point at which the injector actually opens. Now, if you take a look where the injector is turned off, we see the ground is released at this point here. Now, when the ground is released, you can see that immediately the current begins to drop off. And again, we have a slight ramp dropping off because, again, the collapsing magnetic field. Because of the collapsing magnetic field, we also have this large voltage spike. Now, voltage spike here, it's showing a little over 50 volts. Um, that's normal for this vehicle. Some of them, as I said, may approach 100 volts. If we travel down as this continues to dissipate its energy, we see a bump right here. This bump is the actual closing point of that pinnacle. Again, we've got a strong magnetic field. We've got a compressed spring. The pinnacle is pulled against the compressed spring. When we turn the magnetic field off, it does not instantly lose all of its strength. It's going to take a little bit of time for that spring then to push that pinnel closed, and we see it occurring right there. So, current ramp, telling us several things. One, again, we can take a look at the current. Most of them are going to be pulling right around one amp, and that's what we have here. Uh, we see the opening, and we see the closing points there. Very useful test, in my opinion, if you're trying to determine whether you have an electrically sound and a mechanically sound injector. This isn't telling me if it's injecting fuel or not, but with this particular test, I can say for sure that the pindle is opening and closing. Uh, the coil appears to be intact. Uh, it's pulling the proper amount of amperage, and we're getting that big voltage kick when the computer shuts it off. So. I would say that this is a good injector electrically, mechanically. Uh, the last test would be to actually flow it, make sure that it's not dirty. I could have dirt clogging the pimple, uh, or the, sorry, the orifice in the end of this injector. Uh, this test won't tell me that, but this at least tells me I do have a good injector. It is, uh, the electrical integrity is sound, uh, mechanically is opening and closing. And that's all I've got for this one. There's current ramping and uh, looking at the boldest trace of an injector.